Hey kids, welcome to Crossways Kid Venture Kids Online. I'm Lauren and this is Maya. Hi everybody! In case you're new at Kid Venture Kids Online, I should let you know that Kid Venture Kids is a great place for kids to learn about God, faith, and even life apps. What are life apps? Life apps are just our way of talking about what God can work out inside of you to change the world around you. Things like love, respect, and forgiveness. And don't forget that we do that with a lot of faith field fun to help you grow your faith in Jesus Christ. And don't forget, putting your faith into action kid style. Hey, you can even stand up, sing, and dance with the worship music. And now it's time to get started. Let's start with a drum roll on your knees, everybody. Three, Three two, one.
afraid something is wrong You remind me that you're in control What's your favorite way to discover something new? Maybe you like to do a deep dive, the old fashioned way. When the moon is overhead, you weigh slightly less. What? Maybe you like to go straight to the source and ask someone. Hey mom, can you teach me how to make those amazing chocolate chip cookies? You might use a virtual assistant to surf the web. Alexa, how many feet are in one mile? There are 5,280 feet in one mile. You might even like to discover new things by running your own experiment. What happens if I leave a piece of string cheese at the bottom of my backpack for three weeks? Ugh. There are so many ways to learn and a whole universe to discover. But the very most important thing to learn about is the one who created it all. Like, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Every good and perfect gift is from above from God. God counts every hair on your head. God loves our curiosity. God loves when we ask questions. And the more you discover about God and the world God made, the more you can follow God with your life. When you discover brand new ways to share God's love with those around you, then others can see how God is teaching you to grow. That's why knowledge is such an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Hey! What's the big idea? Hey! What's the big 
idea! When you discover something new, it can change you. Welcome to Story Lab! This week we're talking about knowledge, while we take a look at the story of someone who got some information from a very surprising source. Hey, I'm Amaya! And I'm Zeke! And we're talking about knowledge, which is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. Okay, what are we doing today? We're gonna take a drink of water. Oh. Done. No, I mean this water. Uh, what is that? <laughs> this is water from the creek that runs on the back of my neighborhood. <laughs> Hold on. Have you even looked at this? There's, there's got to be stuff that's alive in there. Yep. I am definitely not drinking this. Well, I didn't say we we're going to drink it like this. I discovered online how we can make our own filter right here. A filter that will legit clean this water. For reals. And you're saying we should trust the internet? Kids, do not always trust the internet. Also, please get help from an adult to do this. Well, I'm saying we should boil the water too. Boiling water for at least three minutes will kill all pathogenic bacteria, viruses, and protozoa. That helps, but you're still gonna have to convince me about that filter. Well then, let's make it. Step one. Cut the bottom off a plastic water bottle. Now what? Step two. Place a paper towel in the mouth of the bottle. Perfect. Step three. Pour in a couple of inches of charcoal powder. I think that should be enough. Ready for pouring. Perfect. Step four, pour in a couple inches of fine sand. Step five, pour in a few inches of small rocks. And there you go. This is finished? Yep. All ready for our creek water. <laughs> All right. Here goes. How long is this supposed to take? Yeah, we should probably time lapse. What do you think? I think it's impressively free of life forms. Ah, oh, what are you doing? We still have to boil it. Oh, <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, better let that cool down first. We got to check out some river water in our story today. It's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the fourth book of the New Testament, John. But before John, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into a relationship. So, at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. As Jesus grew older, he became wiser and stronger and more pleasing to God and people, which is where our story starts. Take it away. 
Hey everyone! Now, you might remember that Jesus had a cousin, right? Who was six months older. His name was John, and he had been sent by God to help get people's hearts ready to hear the words of Jesus. Turn away from your sins! The kingdom of heaven has come near! People streamed out from Jerusalem and the whole region of Judea to see the show, and many people actually listened. John baptized these people in the murky water of the Jordan River as a sign that from now on, their lives would be different. I baptize you with water, but after me, someone is coming who is more powerful than I am. The Jewish religious leaders heard tales of this dynamic new guy on the scene. So they sent priests and teachers to discover just who this John was. Who are you? Are you the one God promised to rescue us? <laughs> I am not the Messiah. Well, then, are you Elijah? No. What about the prophet? Nope. Just give us an answer. I'm just a messenger. But someone is standing among you whom you do not know. I am not good enough to untie his sandals. God had already spoken to John about the Messiah. God told him, you will see the Spirit come down and remain on someone. He is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now around this time, Jesus himself came to John at the Jordan River. They were cousins, but John already knew that Jesus was special. I want you to baptize me. What? No. <laughs> I need to be baptized by you. So why do you come to me? Let it be this way for now. It is right for us to do this. It carries out God's holy plan. So John dipped Jesus down into the waters of the Jordan. And as Jesus rose up out of the water, God sent his spirit to rest on him like a dove. A voice from heaven echoed, This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Now maybe this is when John recalled God's words and put all the pieces together. Jesus was God's chosen one. The next day, John was with several of his followers and spotted Jesus walking past. Look, the Lamb of God. Unlike the religious leaders, these men were quick to hear the truth about Jesus. They hurried after him. Rabbi! Jesus turned to the two men. What do you want? One of them named Andrew said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Come, you will see. Andrew and his friend followed Jesus and spent the rest of the day with him. They were so amazed by Jesus that Andrew immediately went and told his brother, Simon Peter, that they had found the Messiah. Then Peter began to follow Jesus too. These men heard the truth about Jesus and immediately followed him. The religious leaders heard the truth, well, and didn't believe it. But some of John's followers heard what he had to say and didn't like it. Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the river is baptizing people. You know, the one you told us about. Everyone's leaving you and following him. It was true. Many people had begun to follow Jesus instead of John. But John wasn't upset. You yourselves are witnesses that I said I am not the Messiah. I was sent ahead of him. He must become more important. I must become less important. Well, yeah, but are you, like, okay with it? The Father loves the Son and has put everything into his hands. Anyone who believes in the Son has eternal life. John had spent his life listening to God, so he discovered the truth about Jesus and shared it with everybody he met. And everyone who truly listened knew that Jesus was the one to follow. The end. So wait, Jesus and John were cousins, right? So do you think they ever played with each other? Well, you know, we don't really know. They didn't live near each other, but what we do know is that at some point, God made it clear to John who his cousin Jesus really was. Yeah, then John changed what he was doing to point people to Jesus. And right after that, Andrew and Peter started following Jesus too. That's right. When you discover something new, it can change you. So what's our part in the story? Well, we learn new things all the time, right? But just learning something doesn't matter until you let it change your thoughts and words and actions. The most important new thing you can discover is that Jesus is God's son. Once you know who Jesus is, you can choose to believe in him and follow him. 
God's Spirit will help you to be more like Jesus. And that knowledge will show up in everything you say and do. And as you follow Jesus, you'll start to see and learn other new things too. Maybe you learned that some kids and family in your own community don't have enough to eat. Knowing this could make you more grateful for what you have and more ready to share. Yeah, you might even start a canned food drive to help. Or maybe you discover that that kid at school that you thought was really rude is going through some really tough stuff back at home. That knowledge can change how you think about them and how you treat them. Yeah, I mean, there's no end to the new things you can discover and how you can grow. See you next time. So here's the thing, when you discover something new, it can change you. Is that the stuff we filtered? And boiled. Hold on. Cheers. <laughs> oh yeah, that's way better than my water at home. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Proverbs 2, 6. The Lord gives wisdom. Knowledge and understanding come from his mouth. Guess what the emojis spell out? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it could be anything, like a movie or a TV show or a president. Who knows? All right. Okay. We can try to guess them together. Sound yeah, good? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Okay. Silhouette something, music. Something a, a, uh, a. Uh, plus a plus singing, a. Sing, uh, sing, sing, a, a. Uh, sing Singapore. Singapore, the country. Singapore, yes. Whoa, nice job. I was not going to get that one. Uh, iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, that was easy. I spent a lot of time on my iPhone. Uh, uh, Searching. Mag magnifying glass fish. I don't know. There's no magnifying Search. fish, is there? Uh, uh, finding Nemo. Yes? Yeah. I would have guessed Finding Dory, but that oh, was a great job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I love that Taco Bell. Easy. These are getting easier. All right. This one's going to be easy. Uh, Needle. Sewing thread, thread and sewing thread. Television. Sewing. Th yep. Is, uh, yep. Needle. 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 Spool te needle television. And needle spool. spool. So television could be show. Oh, that's cool. Uh, like needle spool, spool. Spool and spool. Show. Needle spool and sewing. Sewing and sewing show. I have no idea. Do you have any ideas? No idea. <gasps> no. Oh. needle in the thread. Hello everyone, I'm Steven. And I'm Brandon. And this is the So-and-So Show. Oh, oh, that's what it was. Okay, <laughs> I get it now. Anyway, uh, how's your uh, post-holiday time going, bud? Oh, it's been going great. No I got a deep fryer for Christmas. Oh, yeah, wow. and I've been going crazy with it. You know, I really just miss the holiday foods so much. No, really not me. No, I tend to be kind of a picky eater, so. Well, I'm sure there was still plenty of stuff at Christmas dinner for you to eat. Mm, not really. Roast beef? Not for me. Mashed potatoes and gravy? <laughs> not even a maybe. Cranberry sauce? I'd rather eat moss. Turkey and stuffing. You gotta be bluffing. Fruitcake? Mistake. Eggnog? Total slog. Hot cocoa? Huge no-no. Deep fried macaroni and cheese balls? Now that 
I'm into. Frankly, I'll eat just about anything that's been deep fried. Really? Yeah, I guess it makes it easier because I can't see what I'm about to consume. Hmm, well that gives me a good idea. We're gonna expand your palate today, pal. That's right. We're gonna play a little game called... Deep Fried Mystery. Okay, as I said before, I've been going nuts with my deep fryer. I will give you a selection of deep fried foods and you're going to try and guess what they might be before biting into them. Sound good? All right, at least I don't have to go out for lunch today. Okay. All right. Ready? Yeah. Macaroni and cheese bites. Ah. So, Brandon, what do you think it is? Um, well, I think this is, uh, this is what we've talked about before, the thing that started this whole conversation. I think this is a macaroni and cheese bite. Mm, <laughs> this is so good! Yeah, well, I wanted to start you off with something easy. Mm -hmm. Next! Right. A fried Oreo. Mmm. So, what do you think it is? Can I, can I touch it? Yeah. All right. Kind of looks like a vanilla wafer or a macaroon or something oh. like that. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> Can I try? You got me. You're yeah, me nervous. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Mmm. Oh, good. It's an Oreo. Yeah, it's a fried Oreo. What do you think? That's pretty tasty. Yeah. Mm. Okay, want to try another one? Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Deep fried watermelon. Oh. Ah. I don't know. Yeah. It looked like half a donut or like a cinnamon roll or something. I don't like. know. You Ew. gotta try it. I don't like it. What do you mean, ew? It's just gross. You it's, didn't even it's know falling yet. falling apart in my hands. Just take a bite. Okay, okay. Is that watermelon? It is! <laughs> Who fries a watermelon? I do. I did. <laughs> you have an opinion? I'm actually shocked how good it is. <laughs> These have all been winners so far. Well, we'll see how that holds up. What do you think about this next one? Next! <laughs> Salsa. <laughs> <laughs> this could be anything. Is it like a fried egg? Uh, no. Like a like cheese? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Try it. Okay, I'll try it. Mmm, spicy. Yeah. What do you think? Is it salsa? It's salsa! I've never had salsa before. And you know this stuff would go great with tortilla chips? You don't say. Yeah. I probably would have never tried it if it hadn't been fried. See, that's the point. You don't know what you like until you try it. Mm, I like this game. Hey, but we need to get this all cleaned up. Why? Because it's Bible story time with Cullen! Oh, of course. You got any more mac and cheese bites? I do. Hey, Kellen. Hey, fellas. What are we learning about today? Well, today we're talking about a huge moment in Jesus' life when he was baptized. But who could possibly baptize someone like Jesus? Stay tuned to find out that answer and more as we go Behind the Bible. Well, okay then, let's do it. John the Baptist was a cousin of Jesus. His clothes were made of camel hair, and for food, he ate locusts and wild honey. Okay, true. To look at John, he probably seemed kind of wild, but he was actually very special. You see, years before, a prophet named Isaiah said this about John. A messenger is calling out in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. John was the guy who would prepare the world for the arrival of Jesus. And he also dressed weird. Sure. John attracted so much attention, leaders in Jerusalem sent priests to find out more about him. People were coming up to me and saying things like, are you the one that God promised to rescue us? Are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? It wasn't any of those things. So I told them the truth. I'm just a messenger. I wasn't even good enough to untie the Messiah's sandals. 
John spent his time preaching to the people and baptizing them with water. People came from all around to be baptized. And then someone very special came. I look up and there's my cousin walking toward me. You know, Jesus. And he says, he wants me to baptize him, me. <laughs> baptize him. And I'm like, no, you should be the one baptizing me. But he said, let it be this way. It carries out God's holy plan. So I did it. John baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. And as Jesus was coming out of the water, John saw something incredible. I looked up and I saw what looked like a dove coming down from heaven. It was the Holy Spirit coming to Jesus. That was when I knew for sure Jesus was the guy I'd been talking about. He was the Messiah, the, 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 the Lamb of God. It changed everything for me, for all of my followers too. John had many followers. But as soon as John discovered Jesus was the Messiah, he pointed his followers to Jesus. John had always said, I'm not the guy. Somebody better than me is coming. So we knew to keep searching for him, right? Well then, one day, I saw John point to Jesus and say, Look, the Lamb of God. So, duh. I start following Jesus, and I told my brother Simon Peter to come meet him too. Hmm, <laughs> game changer. Some of my followers had a hard time following Jesus after following me for so long. So I said to them, he must become more important. I must become less important. The one who comes from above is above everything all of it. John the Baptist, a man of great faith and poor fashion sense. This has been Behind the Bible. Thanks. You're welcome. When John discovered something new, it changed him. He saw the truth about Jesus and shared that knowledge with the world. And he was able to change untold numbers with that knowledge. Maybe you can do the same thing. It's amazing what a little knowledge can do. See you next time, guys. Thanks, Kellen. I feel like I know more already. But do you know enough to know what's next? Let's see. Yes, yes, I know. It's time to reveal the question. Today's question is, when have you discovered something new? I have discovered a bunch of new stuff I like to eat. And I discovered that you can deep fry watermelon. Honestly, every single day is a chance to learn something new, uh, whether it's watching an educational video or uh, reading a book or just talking to someone about an experience that you've never had. Yeah, like uh, your grandparents, asking them about what things were like when they were your age. Yeah, or if you have a friend from another country, you can ask about their culture. Try to go to bed tonight having discovered something new. In fact, Brandon and I will pledge to do that right now. I'm in, but uh, we're going to have to uh, cut the argle bargle. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> You'll have to look it up. I can't. I'm a flibberty gibbet. Oh, what's that? To the dictionary. All right. Until next time, I'm Steven. And I'm Brandon. And this was the So-and-So Show. We'll, we'll see, see you, you real soon. soon. Yep. Bye, everybody. See ya. All right, let's see. What do what, I have? You said argle bargle. I said argle bargle. You said flibberty, flibberty gibbet. gibbet. Flibberty gibbet. Starts, starts F, F L argle. Flibberty. Argyle. Anymore. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Ah! I caught it. That was it. it. That was, you had it. Have I tried this yet? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. It might be my notepad. It looks like lasagna. Mmm, it could be fried lasagna. I did fry some lasagna. Yeah, honestly, I just fried a lot of stuff. <laughs> my shoe got into one of them right before oh, I did the okay. PB&Js. Hey, what's the big idea? Yeah.
When you discover something new, it can change you. Mine. You're not. Your hand is reaching out for mine. My-